All right. So that's immensely powerful. Let's also look at a slightly different case. We are looking at potential flow here. How about including the effect of viscosity? Now, if we consider the flow is viscous, the dimensional velocity field now depends on how many numbers. Six, right? We just include uh, the effect of viscosity. That's just uh, easy. So for viscous flow, u is x, y, uh, again, let's say rho infinity, u infinity, r, and mu. So we still have all these dimensions, but we have another dimension, mu being what? What's the dimension of the dynamic viscosity? So, okay, so you have mass over length and time, all right? So, so the, kinema the kinematic viscosity is of, is of unit uh, length squared by time. So the uh, dynamic viscosity is this times the unit of density, which is mass divided by L cubed. So you get mass divided by LT, all right? So we can see that Introducing this additional parameter didn't introduce any additional units. We can still only reduce by how many? Three, right? So we are supposed to get, after reduction, we are supposed to get u over u infinity as a function of, let's say, still x over r, y over r, and something else. How do we figure out that something else? Do, do we know what is that something else? Can anybody just uh, tell me? The Reynolds number, yes. How do we figure out? So in this case, we have all taken fluid dynamics classes. We know it's the Reynolds number that is the third independent variable here. But in a more general case, if you are going to be doing it for not just a flow across a circular cylinder, but another problem, how do you do it? How do you figure out what is that independent parameter that is not x or y? Hmm? Right, build a non-dimensional group. And you can do this actually using MATLAB. So this is all these, so, so let's, we already taken care of x and y. You know, we know how to non-dimensionalize them. So let's just uh, take all of these uh, quantities and figure out what is the appropriate combination to make them a non-dimensional group. All right. So for this to be a non-dimensional group, you have to multiply, divide, or take powers of all these quantities so that it is non-dimensional. So let's say the non-dimensional group, uh, question mark, is equal to rho to the a one power times u to the a 2 power, oh, so these are infinities, times r to the a 3 power times mu to the a 4 power. All right. What you need to do is to make this question mark non-dimensional. So, if you look at the units of this question mark, it is m to the a one power divided by, well, let's not just uh, say divide by, times l to the minus 3 a one power. So this is the dimension of rho infinity, right? The dimension of u infinity is going to be l to the a two power times t to the minus a two power. The dimension of r to the a3 is just the l to the a 3 power, and the dimension of mu to the a 4 power is going to be what? Uh, m to the a4 divided by l, uh, let's not do divide, uh, times l to the minus a4 times t to the minus a4. Right, so this is the unit of the question mark. So what is the criterion for the question mark to be non-dimensional? 
The sum of the exponents for every single dimension has to come to zero. That gives me a list of linear equations. So let's do it one by one. Let's look at m first. Now m only appears in a1 and a4, right? So I get a1 plus a4 has to equal to zero. Okay, now let's look at L second. Minus three A one plus A two plus A three minus A four has to be equal to zero for L to be not appearing in the unit of question mark. Right? Finally we look at time. For time A one doesn't appear, so we only get minus A two. Uh, and minus a4 equal to 0. So we have a set of linear equations, all right, uh, four variables, three equations. Do we know how to solve that? Can somebody tell me how to solve an equation like that? Set one of the variables to a number. That's correct if you if the answer actually contains a non-zero coefficient in that number, right? So so for example, if you know that you are if you already know what I'm gonna get is something like Reynolds number, which involves mu, I can set the coefficient on uh, on mu, which is uh, a four, right, to be let's say minus one, which is what uh, the, the power of mu is in the Reynolds number. Then you can solve this as a set of three by three linear equations and it's fine. But in general, let's figure out how to solve an equation that has more unknowns than, uh, more unknowns than equations. So, and remember, we want to get a bunch of zeros. So we want to find really the null space of that matrix, right? We want to find linear combinations of the vectors a1, a2, a3, and a4, so that when you multiply the three by four matrix with a vector, you get zeros. All right, so let's, let me demonstrate how to do that in MATLAB. So I'm gonna make the matrix A, uh, X, to be corresponding to that matrix. So the first row corresponds to the first equation, and what is the first row? What is the, hmm? One, zero, zero, one. Second row? Minus three, one, one, minus one. Third row? Good, zero minus one, zero minus one. All right, so I get a matrix like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compute the singular value decomposition of the matrix. All right, so U, S, V is going to S, V, B of this X. So it gives me three matrices. The middle matrix is the singular values and the, la uh, the, the uh, U matrix and V matrix are the, contains the left and right singular vectors corresponding. We are looking for the null space of the matrix which means we need, to, we need to find a vector which right multiplied by the matrix is going to give us zero. So that means we should be looking at the right eigen, uh, singular vectors. All right, so, so this, is a, this is a matrix, uh, let's say x, x a equal to zero, right? So we performed x equal to u times lambda times v transpose, right? Okay, and this lambda, if you look at it, is a three by four matrix with the last column being entirely zero. I mean, this lambda has to be a diagonal matrix, and if it's not a square matrix, there are columns that has to be zero. Now, if columns of lambda is zero, then if you multiply x with corresponding columns of v, I'm gonna get zero. Now, if you look at the corresponding column of v, it's the last column. That gives you the powers being 
sorry, minus 0.5, minus 0.5, minus 0.5, and 0.5. Does that make sense? Okay, so let me, let me write down my solution to the question mark. My question mark in this case, what I get is the square root of mu divided by rho infinity u infinity r. Right? That's what the answer tells me. Minus 0.5, minus 0.5, minus 0.5, and 0.5. That's not Reynolds number. What is that? It's Reynolds number to the minus 1 half. And does that serve the same purpose as the actual Reynolds number? It does. Right? There is no magic about the powers of 1, 1, 1, and minus 1 in the construction of the Reynolds number. If you define it to be the square of the Reynolds number, it's perfectly fine, it's the same. So that's the purpose of the non-dimensional quantity like Reynolds number. It doesn't depend on the particular power of it. All right. So this is what we get serves as an equivalent role as the Reynolds number. All right. Any questions on this? If you're going to do a homework or a project about a uh, trying to find what are the non-dimensional quantities you should use to parameterize a physical phenomena, right? And you can name it up to yourself. This is how you find it. All right. Um, so we already talked about the Pi theorem, which is uh, the number of uh, uh, parameters you can reduce. It's a very powerful thing. And just for the Reynolds number, uh, this is just a sketch of the dependence, how, uh, how the Reynolds number changes the drag over the same circular cylinder. And you can, you can see that there is actually not, it's not a coincidence. A lot of these are plotted against the logarithmic scale of Reynolds number. Just as we just uh, did the analysis. It's the logarithmic scale that is more natural, right? If you plot the logarithmic scale of what we derived, which is 1 over square root of Reynolds number, it'll be just a flipping, flipping the graph over, right? So this is the, the log, logarithmic scale is actually uh, something natural for these non-dimensional quantities. And this is just a different flow phenomenon at different Reynolds numbers. And you can also see the spacing between them is uh, also, in some sense, logarithmic, right? 150, uh, 300, there is a big gap to 4,000 and uh, a lot higher. So. So you are scaling them uh, not linearly, in a sense. All right. So, so if you, if you, uh, if you are comparing Reynolds number, for example, Reynolds number one and Reynolds number ten, you expect a lot larger difference between Reynolds number one and nine than, let's say, Reynolds number a thousand and a thousand and nine, right? 